Uh, my name is Brian Vickers. I'm a staff member here at IDA. Uh, I think we have a good set of talks here, so I'm going to um, kick us off. Uh, we start this session with Dr. Jay Dennis. Uh, he is a uh, economist working here at the Institute for Defense Analyses. Uh, he works in the human capital and test science groups. Um, and today he's going to be talking about uh, collection preparation, curation, and VVNA processes, some definitions, and uh, best practices and challenges that we're running into. So, okay. All right. Talk into this thing. Everybody hear, everybody hear me? Okay. Um, right. So, I'm going to talk about verification, validation, and accreditation for um, specifically for AI enabled capabilities, but um, uh, more generally, well, for data. Share slides. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Ah, in Zoom. It should be. Gotcha. I guess they did not connect it. Or do, do I need to connect to Zoom on this laptop, or are you able to push those? Okay, sorry. Yeah. I think if you have it up, then are you able to click through with the clicker? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. This is nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have. I have control of it. Also. Oh. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. As someone who works remotely, um, I appreciate. I appreciate sharing this with Zoom on. Well, let me know we're good to go. All right, good now? Okay, cool. All right, so um, yeah, so thanks for, for coming to, uh, to the talk this morning. Um, I'm going to talk about um, uh, verification, validation, and accreditation for uh, data, specifically for um, AI-enabled capabilities, but also more generally as well. Um, this is some joint work with, uh, with colleagues um, and part of a um, uh, broader uh, effort in a portfolio um, uh, sponsored by CDAO. Uh, so uh, what is uh, data verification, validation, and accreditation? Um, uh, if you know anything about modeling and simulation, um, then you've probably heard about verification, validation, or accreditation for modeling and simulation. Um, we've had a lot of talks uh, at this conference so far and some more um, uh, coming probably uh, this afternoon uh, that um, talk about modeling and simulation and some that talk about um, verification, validation uh, activities. Um, data verification, validation, or accreditation is very similar. Uh, that is um, actually no coincidence uh, and the, uh, the DOD policy uh, for uh, VNV of MS uh, actually also defines um, VNV uh, for uh, data for modeling and simulation. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> um, so this is something that DOD cares about. Um, part of my job today is going to be to convince you that uh, this policy is also applicable to uh, data for, um, for AI models. Um, <clears throat> uh, some of you may disagree with that, and that's okay. Um, I'll uh, talk about some reasons why there may, there may be some differences there. Um, but um, the first thing I want to talk about is sort of as worded, um, what does the policy tell us? Um, why is that important? Why do we care about uh, data VVNA? Um, and um, uh, then sort of some, uh, some practical considerations uh, for uh, data, uh, for VVNA of data um, uh, associated with AI models specifically. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. So, um, why do we care about VVNA of data um, specifically for AI? Uh, well, um, uh, so uh, I don't know if any, anybody here works out or not, anybody lifts weights, but 
um, the, uh, what's the mantra about leg day with weights, right? You, you, don't, you don't skip leg day, right? You don't want to skip leg day. What, what do people do, though, when they lift weights? Everybody skips leg day. Right? That's, uh, that's, essentially, uh, that's essentially the mantra um, uh, underlying this, this effort here, uh, or underlying this, this work, right? There's a lot of emphasis on the AI model, um, uh, but it's, it's really easy to overlook uh, V and V of the data. Um, and uh, um, it, it's, the, the data, though, is really important. Um, uh, so if you're here, I'm assuming you, you know that um, AI models are, uh, um, uh, the, the intelligence, as, as one of my colleagues says, the intelligence and in artificial intelligence actually is in the data. Um, the foundation of AI models is the data itself. Um, and, and no good uh, uh, presentation about AI would be complete, I think, in, or no, no presentation would be complete in a, without um, some type of um, generative AI, some type of use of a foundation model. So I asked Adobe Illustrator to create a meme for me, um, and this is what it gave me. I've got another fun one at the end um, that, uh, uh, that Copilot, Dolly3, gave me. Um, if we have time, I'll show you that one. I'm going to go into more details about this. This is Doty 5000.61. This is the, um, uh, the policy for VNV of modeling and simulation. Um, and I'm, going to, I'm going to try to convince you actually in the next uh, um, slides here that specifically uh, DOD doesn't want you to skip leg day. Right? Um, uh, this poli it, the, the policy mandates that you conduct um, VNV of models and their associated data. Um, again, some of you might argue, well, is this applicable to AI, right? Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, so uh, first of all, what is this policy? Well, um, the policy establishes um, responsibilities and other things for uh, VVNA of models and their associated data. Um, what's the policy actually telling us? Well, it tells us that models and their associated data need to be VMV. It's also telling us that models and their associated data um, shall be accredited, have to be accredited. Uh, so um, uh, again, um, you know, this is the, um, the DOTI for VNV of modeling and simulation. Um, so maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe the policy, let's see what the policy tells us about, uh, you know, about the scope and about, you know, what this actually applies to. Um, maybe it's just traditional models. Maybe it's um, uh, maybe AI is out of scope. Well, if you go and read the DOTI as worded, uh, you know a model is essentially anything that can be represented as a mathematical formula. Very broad. Um, well, then maybe the policy is different. <laughs> the policy is something you're doing in DOD, right? Um, and actually, I think some things out, uh, outside of DOD that are that are used by DOD as well. Um, Okay, so, so just on that reading, uh, it seems to me, at least, that, um, that maybe, you know, AI can be included in this. AI models seem to be, uh, seem to be represented. Well, um, <clears throat> you can argue that the context is different, right? Typically with M&S, um, we're, um, uh, we're thinking about something that is sort of a support activity, uh, maybe not the system under test. Um, with AI models, we're often, at least lately, we're thinking about using AI in uh, the system under test, right? That's fair. Um, that's, a fair um, uh, that's a fair argument. Um, there are also other things, uh, uh, other issues that we might uh, be concerned with about VVNA, um, particularly the accreditation part, uh, for AI models. Um, and... Um, um, Excuse me. Uh, so, uh, in, in particular, um, there are practical concerns uh, when dealing with um, AI models and their associated data that um, may um, may make some of the activities um, may make something like formal accreditation um, infeasible from a practical perspective in some in some contexts. And I think you know, <clears throat> I think all that's okay. 
I'm hoping that by the end of this presentation, um, I will have convinced you that even if you disagree with the applicability of the policy to AI models and their associated data, you'll still think that um, that uh, V and V um, and maybe something in the spirit of accreditation uh, is um, is still a good idea for AI models and their associated data. Um, and uh, whoop, back. yeah, and so so interestingly, also even though this defines this policy defines uh, the um, uh, defines uh, data VVNA, it actually doesn't define data, and that, that's going to be an interesting um, uh, uh, nuance there when we deal with um, AI models as well. I'm going to talk about it in a minute, uh, where even what we consider the data might be different for an AI model. Um, so what do we mean when we when we say data VVNA from a practical perspective. Um, so all these things here, if you haven't been hiding under a rock for the past few years, you've probably seen all these things and you probably know something about them. Um, uh, a lot of these activities are things that get called out uh, pretty frequently uh, with AI models. Um, they're things that are directly related to the data, things that we might want to look for in the data. Um, uh, in particular, things we want to verify from a needs perspective, you know, are, um, are we meeting specifications and requirements and things that we want to evaluate from, uh, from a mission context, right? Um, but um, uh, there are some additional things that we might want to think about. Well, so also I should say that a lot of this actually isn't specific to AI either. Um, a lot of this is just things that you might care about for data in general. Um, but when we start thinking about um, an AI context, there are some, uh, some practical concerns, considerations that we might uh, uh, that we might need to start thinking about that we wouldn't normally have thought about. Um, and in particular, you know, um, we're all aware that using an AI model outside of its, um, outside of its intended use um, uh, may cause problems, um, which is sort of getting at the spirit of accreditation in the first place. But then we need to also think about, well, um, there are changes that occur in the environment. There are changes um, that occur um, in, the, um, uh, in the relationship between the variables that we're modeling. Um, and, and we may need to be um, concerned about actually breaking accreditation. If we think about accreditation in sort of a formal, um, a formal sense like we might think of traditionally, then um, uh, some issues might actually cause that accreditation to break. And so we need to be thinking about this rather than saying, oh, you know, your, um, your data is, is good now. Um, let's... Uh, um, uh, let's never worry about it again. It's where well, you need to sort of continue to monitor and evaluate. Right. So, um, so what are some practical considerations? I mentioned this earlier. Um, in the context of, um, of uh, an artificial intelligence uh, model, um, what we consider the data might be sort of uh, broader uh, than um, uh, than in sort of a more traditional context. And in particular, some, some things that we need to do VVNA uh, might extend beyond what we think of as a traditional definition of, um, of the data. Uh, so um, some other considerations, uh, what are the requirements? Um, this is an interesting one because AI is developed um, and tested um, uh, uh, sort of in an iterative fashion, right? It, it should be developed, tested in an iterative fashion. Um, been lots of other talks about this. And so in the course of, um, of developing, testing your model, you may, uh, you may need to change some things about the design. Right? What does that mean about the requirements? I don't know. Maybe you get to the users and you, you feel, I mean, you know, this, this may be an expensive thing to happen. You want to try to avoid it, but you may get to, the, to your user base and determine um, that you're testing with users that it doesn't actually meet what they need, and you need to go back and, and revise some things. Uh, maybe you want to change the, the type of model that you're using. There's another model that's, that's um, uh, um, another model architecture, I should say, that, um, uh, that is uh, better for the use case. And so how does that affect requirements for your data? And it may cause some requirements to change. Right. Um, intended use cases. Um, I mentioned some stuff about intended use cases earlier. Um, what does it mean for the data to support the intended use case? Uh, remember the AI model, foundation of that is the data itself. Um, and so we need to think about um, the downstream use cases 
and also how we're going to measure and define operational realism. And of course, you know, what are, what are our acceptability criteria? I'm not actually going to talk about how to do um, VVNA in this talk. Um, we obviously don't have enough time for that. And uh, from um, some of the other presentations that, uh, that we've had here, you've sort of gotten a flavor for some of the ways that we can do VVNA, um, some of the activities uh, that might be useful for VNV. And um, I'm not going uh, not gonna to get into any of that here, um, uh, but there are lots of options out there, lots of tools to help you. Um, and um, uh, um, I, I, what I am going to talk about um, as I sort of um, walk through this are, are some, some best practices, I think. So we're going to talk about these considerations and then sort of round that out with, uh, with some things that are sort of general best practices. Right, so, um, so what is the data? Right, well, I mentioned this earlier. AI models are developed and tested iteratively. Um, we have this, uh, so we have a, um, a model life cycle. Within that life cycle, we also have sort of things you can think of as uh, life cycles of the subcomponents. Um, or you know, sub life, whatever you want to call it, sub life cycles. Just sort of drawn like a um, general uh, life cycle for your data here. Um, your data itself has its own life cycle, um, where you know you collect data, you do some stuff to it to modify it. You want to make sure that data is good to go. You want to curate that data, and you know you're going to use it um, for training and testing and whatever. Um, so uh, the idea here is that. Uh, the data is processed before uh, being passed to the model, um, often is processed before being passed to the model. And so it has to go through, um, through uh, several steps, and each one of these steps affects the data that then affects your, your end monitoring, or your end, uh, uh, your, your, uh, your modeling. Um, and so you need to think about these steps when you're thinking about verification and validation. You think about what those manipulations are doing to the data, how they affect the data, um, and, um, and uh, how uh, those steps um, are, how to do those steps appropriately um, to facilitate uh, your modeling. Um, now, in order to conduct VNV, you may actually need some, some things beyond you know, the, the data itself. Um, and so um, you need to be thinking about collecting um, uh, things that may be, you know, the calculations, right, for your, you know, your, what kind of calculations are you performing to manipulate the data? Um, uh, what types of um, uh, judgment calls might have been made, right? So maybe, maybe you have somebody sitting in an office um, somewhere who, um, is, uh, who is removing outliers from the data, right? What are the criteria that are used to remove those outliers, right? Is this... Um, uh, is this somebody's professional military judgment? We see this sometimes, right? Somebody sits in an office and uses their professional military judgment to determine whether or not um, this data, uh, this data uh, looks right and is appropriate. We need to, need to trim things. Um, subject matter experts are an important part of this whole, this whole process. Uh, but at the same time, we need to know what those subject matter experts are thinking. We need to be concerned with, uh, with things like... Um, uh, if that subject matter expert leaves the position, does the next person do the same thing when they come in? Do they know what that previous, um, uh, what that previous uh, person that role was doing? Um, and is there some sort of a succession plan, right, um, to, to sort of keep consistency in the calculations? Um, we need to think about um, uh, things like where your data came from and, and who's had their hands on it, right? These are just things that I think we all um, we're all aware of. Okay, so um, requirements, I mentioned this earlier. Um, uh, we, you know, we may have things that, you know, that we're all aware of, right? Mandates for, for cleaning, mandates for producing metrics, um, cadence, frequency for updates. Um, uh, we also need to think about um, uh, boundaries. I'm calling boundaries here um, anything where... Um, uh, uh, anything that may come from a data provider or a contractor, things that, that um, uh, sort of form the boundary of when you get your hands on the data versus um, uh, you, know, you being the project, when the, the, your, your AI project gets its hands on the data, 
um, versus whatever was happening to it before. Um, so um, you need to think about how uh, um, those data providers, for example, may change data collection practices. Um, you need to think about um, also, and I mentioned this one earlier, how um, your design choices may change over the life cycle right? um, and how that affects uh, your needs for, um, for the data that you're collecting, that you're then using for your modeling, for your, um, uh, for your training and testing. Right? There's some other things we might need to think about um, that are uh, commonly mentioned um, with, um, with artificial intelligence models. Uh, and matter of fact, um, uh, so yesterday, Yosef uh, uh, um, Raisin gave uh, a talk about trust and mentioned in that talk that um, we have several different um, definitions of fairness and that there are, uh, um, that they are, it is mathematically provable, and, and has, there are some papers about this, that uh, you cannot simultaneously satisfy um, uh, all uh, mathematical definitions of fairness. And so what does that mean in this context? Well, maybe you need to state up front as sort of a requirement what kind of, um, what kind of uh, bias what, uh, you, you are okay with and what you're not okay with. Um, so uh, that sort of gives you something to, to test against, right? some criteria to look for. Um, some other things that we're all aware of um, here, you know, privacy, security, ethical sourcing, um, uh, some things that might not be necessarily um, uh, specifically for AI, but just good ideas in general and things that are called out commonly with, with AI models. Um, okay, so um, intended use cases. Um, I think I've mainly said this. I'll mention one more thing here. So intended use cases. Um, this one here, are the labels aligned with and appropriate for the intended use? Uh, we've encountered some um, cases uh, where, um, uh, where the developers have gotten to, um, uh, to a fielded model and learned that the data ontology um, actually is not the ontology that they need to be using uh, from a use case, and so they have to go back and, and revise the data ontology, um, change the labels, um, and uh, then, you know, retrain, retest your model. Um, and that, that can be a really expensive uh, thing to do um, if you have to do it after the fact. So these are things that, um, that uh, really, uh, it really helps to, to spend a good bit of time thinking about this up front. Can I pull uh, that thread a little bit? Yeah, sure. Right, so, so that's a tremendously important point that you just brought up. Um, so the question that I have for you is how is the chief data and analytics office helping to drive the enumerations, the taxonomies, the ontologies associated with how we speak commonly across the DOD to, to help us in that uh, effort? That's a very good question. Um, so uh, in general, um, uh, I think, so talking about responsibilities um, uh, is probably beyond the scope of this presentation just for, v, for VVNA. Um, uh, but um, that sort of that's a much broader question. It's a very important question. CDO is doing um, uh, is doing some work. We at IDA are doing some work for CDAO uh, to develop um, uh, to develop some frameworks, some guides. We put together a lexicon. Um, uh, I think there are lots of lexicons floating around right now, <laughs> with, that's, with, that's with lots problem. of conflicting terminology. Yeah. This is an ongoing problem. Um, matter of fact, one that I didn't mention that I put in the slides up here. It's just unfortunate, and it's a fun example. Um, uh, validation, right? Here I'm talking about validation, meaning, you know, um, we're thinking about testing something uh, as, a support, as a supporting element of a system under test, and that's very different from a validation set, and I hear these things confused all the time, right? Validation set actually is something very specific from the machine learning community that is a sample split that is used for hyperparameter tuning and that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about today. But the terminology gets confused. And that's one example among many where, um, uh, where we have um, many different uh, terms for many different definitions for the same term. Um, I, I think the community is moving towards 
um, uh, moving towards common understanding of these things, I think it's going to take a while and a lot of education um, to really get there. So um, at, at the, very, the very last slide of this presentation, um, I have uh, some examples of products that we're producing with CDAO um, that uh, sort of get to your question. But yeah, very, very important question, very important issue. Um, absolutely. Oh, right. So um, uh, operational realism, um, I'll say a uh, little bit about this. Um, uh, defining and measuring operational realism, we all know this is important um, uh, from the get-go with, uh, with AI models. Um, we know that um, level of fidelity uh, is, uh, is an issue. We know that we have to worry about edge cases. We know that we have to worry about um, spurious relationships. Um, but uh, how do you do this? What are the, what are the considerations here? Um, and the issue there is that I think it, it, really, um, it really depends on, uh, on your use case, right? Um, but uh, an, an example there, so think uh, maybe you have a, um, uh, an image classifier and you're trying to classify uh, tanks versus school buses, right? Um, is it sufficient to include um, uh, in your image classifier, is it sufficient, uh, your, your data for your um, training your image classifier, is it sufficient to include um, uh, just you know, tanks and school buses? Do you need to think about different, uh, having those in different backgrounds? Um, do you need to think about um, uh, the fact that your adversaries may decide to paint a school bus green so that you're uh, to try to to try to fool your classifier into thinking that it's a tank. Um, do you need to think about um, uh, including perturbations in your uh, data that are imperceptible to humans and altogether? Right. Um, so this is a this is a very tricky thing. Um, I don't have any answers for this in a in a general context. I don't know that anybody does. Um, but it's certainly something that is very, uh, very important to consider in the, um, in the uh, uh, context of your use case. So um, uh, acceptability criteria, um, this is sort of just general um, here, right, for any sort of uh, VVNA. Um, but then I mentioned earlier that we need to, um, up, we, we may need to worry about breaking accreditation here. Um, and so for example there, does data drift imply the need to reaccredit? Right? Can data drift break accreditation? I don't know. Maybe. Um, maybe it depends, right? I mean, maybe it's a situation where um, you just need to collect updated data and retrain your model. Right? Or maybe it's a situation where um, your data provider uh, has changed the type of data that they're collecting um, or changed the way they're collecting the data. It's just something to consider, right? I mean, think, there may be situations in which you. Um, uh, you need to um, worry about your accreditation being broken from a formal standpoint. Still think that the general spirit of VVNA is, um, I'm about to wrap up, is, um, uh, is a good idea. So uh, I'll skip this slide and talk about this. Um, so uh, a few best practices to close out. Um, uh, think about the life cycle. Think about how things change over the life cycle when you're thinking about uh, VVNA of your data, um, and that's the life cycle of um, your model, the life cycle of the data, right? There's um, uh, multiple life cycles to actually think about here. Um, document everything, version everything. These, we, we know to do these things, right? Um, do by code. Why do we want to do things by code? Reproducibility, transparency, right? And also when you do things by code, now you, um, you can... Uh, um, you, you have known frameworks for evaluating that code as well, which is really nice. Um, and then, you know, use existing tools. I've given some examples here um, uh, from CDAO uh, portfolio um, uh, of things like the RA toolkit, the JDIC toolkit. There are other toolkits out there. Lots of tools exist. Um, use tool. Make sure the tool you're using is appropriate, obviously. Right? Um, and uh, this is the slide I was getting to um, uh, to your question. Um, we've developed some, um, uh, some test evaluation frameworks. Uh, we're also developing some guidebooks, um, a, a responsible AI guidebook, data quality guidebook, a couple others that aren't mentioned here, and some workforce certification um, as well, uh, targeted at DAU, I believe. Um, and all these things talk about um, data VVNA in some aspect or another. Um, so yeah, I'll, cl I'll close out there. Oh, and, and if you're curious, 
Uh, this was the the <laughs> the meme from Dolly Three. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, yeah. Thanks.